they would burn this field in a controlled burn one year so that the next year there would be even more chia seeds. Mm -hmm. It was a form of agriculture they mm -hmm. practiced, but it was even more sustainable. They knew the limits of the land and they knew how to get as much out of the land as they could. And actually when they would burn stuff in a controlled way, that would dry the acorns. And so the acorns would last for 10 years in the granaries. They would last for a long time. Whereas nowadays, if you wanted to collect acorns, they'd probably rot and get worms or whatever, you know, but they would last. I mean, the way they did it, it you know, it was, you could say it was primitive, but really it, it was worked. it was very advanced and it was very imbalanced, you know? And so when you plant these in your yard, when you encourage, you know, cities when they're making a new park or when you when you restore habitat like we do in the Rosego Foundation or other organizations, when you promote native plants, what you're doing is you're making our lands all go back into balance. Because just like this used to provide for people and like it still can, it provides for all of our our bees, our, our hummingbirds, our butterflies, like all of the animals, the bunnies, like everything. When when you just have grass, when you have plants from like the you know the big box stores that are all the same no matter what freeway exit you go to it's all the same you know I mean it's just it's sterile when you build soccer fields of plastic grass and of roads and of parking lots in Haamanga it's sterile you're killing that and especially after all of the mountains which you can't see today but were burned by the station fire this is where all the animals are coming you know so we need to preserve as much of this as we can and really when you plant oak trees in the city when you, and you know they don't mess up the sidewalks because the roots are adapted to go deep for their water because we only get so much rain you know as opposed to planting trees which crack the sidewalks because they're used to growing in places where it's humid and the water's all on the surface and they, everything we do that's not in balance there's consequences and so when you promote our native plants our whole environment goes into balance we use less water we have more bees which we need them because they're dying out you know we you know we have more life you know and, and and we use less pesticides or no pesticides. We use less fertilizers because we no longer have to create artificial environments for lawns or for trees that don't belong. We just rely on the rain, you know? Like, who is watering that? I think it's probably like God, if you're religious, right? Like it's, you know, like nature, God, the universe. It's a, you know, this is, this is, this plant, these plants, are exactly where we are in the universe. It is eternal what we are in. This plant is where eternity put it. I didn't put it there, you know, but like if you put if you if you restore them, if you put the right plants in the right place, then we go back to balance, you know? So uh, you said that you lead hikes or tours? Oh uh, yeah you can check our